Welcome to the Gatling of Guns Talk Show, episode 99. I have 99 problems, but I got eight one. I'm your host, the Crover. Say hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. You know these people. It's uh, it's crazy. Uh, Adriel, the hunting gear guy. Uh, there's a lot to talk about, potentially, depending on how much bullshit we decide to dwell into. But there may not be. So let's start with what you've been up to, crazy. Anything gun related? All the ranges here are still closed. They're probably going to be closed until like mid fucking May because the premier has no idea about how in the hell or when in the hell to reopen the province. He released some bullshit thing of like, here's here's kind of what's going to guide our reopening of the province, but provided no actual concrete dates. Ranges have been closed since the end of fucking March, and this will probably be the first month in like three years that I have not had a chance to go shooting. So, yeah, I, I have not been able to do anything gun-related because all the fucking gun shit in this province is closed. Are you upset about this? I can't tell. <laughs> no, I'm completely not upset at all at the fact that the Premier has closed a fantastic place to social distance while doing an outdoor activity. Not a, not irritated in the oh, you're slightest. You're not allowed to camp in the woods. <laughs> yeah, actually, the crowd land is, not, is closed for camping, yeah. which, how the fuck are you going to enforce Andrew, that? The woods are closed. <laughs> can't go no, the, in the woods with an SKS. The woods are only oh, closed right. at night. It's it's fine. The woods are open oh, yeah. in the more in the in the daytime. They're only closed at night. <laughs> this makes sense. This is totally, makes sense. Uh, totally makes sense. Fucking Christ. Uh, so yeah, and I haven't bought anything because again, I'm I'm trying to not spend money on guns because I'm still planning on spending money on other shit. Which I but still haven't buy spent your, uh, money on. Hayabusa, right? <laughs> Fuck. I'm actually really surprised that the Hayabusa is not more expensive of a motorcycle given its reputation and performance. Uh, what's the insurance like if you get okay. one of those? Okay. Okay. We're not I'm not talking about the insurance on the Hayabusa. I'm talking about actually purchasing <laughs> no, 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 no. it. Please tell me, are you are you or do you identify as male? <laughs> okay, I have I have no interest in the Hayabusa. Really at all. I'm not a huge you know, sport. If you declare yourself a woman, your insurance will be lower. Oh yes, yes. There's there there is that. I. <laughs> it's a life hack have, right there. So I, have a, I have to. I have to move right there. I have debated wondering about how how this will affect my insurance rates until you know they convict me of insurance fraud, but uh, yeah. That's Anything gun related? Uh no, no. Like I said, there's. I've done nothing gun related. Well, Pretty much at all. Hey, Crover, uh, well, we had someone asking about that Keltec on the stream already. No shit, really? Mm -hmm. Yep. How was that Keltec? You will know soon, Mr. Sir Lord Baron Von Cheese Ham. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> you will know very soon. <laughs> Adrian, what have you been up to? Uh, let's see. I've been reloading. I reloaded a ton of 308, 65 Creedmoor. I'm out of bullets now. Uh, so, uh, what's that? What did you say? I'm out of bullets. Mm. I have taken all my bullets and I've put them all on cases, and now I have no more bullets. So now you, you're what you are definitely not out of is rounds. No, I got lots of rounds. Yes, lots of rounds. but okay. bullets, bullets, no bullets. Um, I just recently, uh, I, I I've mentioned on the show here before. I was curious about those cross mags cross contact me, and they're like, "Hey, you want to try our mags?" I'm like, "Yeah," because <laughs> for three gun. Uh, in Canada, we have to run a lot of mags. We have to run a lot of mags. If you use the five rounders uh, that uh, that you that uh, the government gives us, uh, you'd have to run like I don't know uh, six of these things, six of these doubles to to be able to effectively. Geez, no, that might even be short. That that would be short. You would need uh, a couple more, maybe eight. Like, uh, like that that picture of the dude with the plate carrier, and he's yes. got like thirty fucking mags yeah. on it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so no one actually runs these these five rounder uh, rifle mags in Canada. Everyone runs uh, lar mags, and uh, it used to be you could only get the short ten rounders. So people are like, oh, well, those are like impossible to get out of these uh, uh, out of any of the mag ca holders that would run an AR mag because that would be a much would be sticking out. Some people got three D printed extensions. Some people got coupled mags, mags that were coupled at the base there. 
And there's a couple advantages to that. It's very compact. It's uh, it's a lot of rounds as well in a compact package. So if you got like, one of these doubles here, you could run 20, 40 rounds on your belt, 20 rounds on your gun, and uh, you'd have enough rounds for uh, uh, for a stage, right? Uh, no problem with just like a very small bit of your belt. Because again, like in Canada, we're running like a ton of pistol mags, a ton of rifle mags, a ton of shot shells. If you're a skinny dude, you will not have enough belt space to run three gun in, in Canada unless you get real creative. So have uh, you seen people like have to add like a plate carrier to carry more stuff with them? You might run a chest rig for shot shells, but you'd never run a plate carrier because the plate carriers are just slow. They're just, they've got like belts and flaps and stuff in the way. They're just not effective for competition shooting. For like getting, if you're getting shot at and you, you yeah, plates, fantastic. Lots of mags. I, guess, like, I shouldn't have said plate carrier, more like a vest. So he carries stuff. They're all slow. They're all too slow. Yeah. For, for a competition, because we're not like retaining mags uh, and speed is of the utmost importance in a game like 3Gun. 3Gun is, is, is a, a game. It is a competition. It's not a simulation of reality or anything like that. No one's, no one's running around with a <laughs> shotgun uh, on the battlefield. Um, <laughs> have you considered a, like trying to run like a brutality style match? Excuse, excuse me, sir. The documentary John Wick Two says otherwise. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So a brutality match would be like running. You have to carry all your ammo and gear the whole time. You can't leave magazines behind. Um, and that's a certain style of match that's a little bit more realistic. Um, I my local club runs a mostly gamer style three gun, which I prefer because I like to go fast and I, I see it for what it is, which is a a, a competition. It's a, so. Do you characterize yourself as high speed low drag. Uh, I like to go fast. I like to go fast, and I I feel that um, trying to enforce some of the rules to make it practical become impractical, and then that's where it gets a little bit silly, and it, and that's where you get um, uh, rules that are difficult to enforce. Uh, and <laughs> difficult, <laughs> difficult to maintain <laughs> competitive <laughs> equity. Yeah. I mean, you you, sh you should remember that when they designed the brutality style matches, uh, Carl and Ian and them, they considered fairness and decided against it. Yes. Yep. They they decided that no realism is more important than absolute fairness. Because um, like if you go for absolute fairness, like I would say, Ipsic is it, the competitive equity is very high in Ipsic. Uh, but it's also you get, like, like a box, right? You, you get so a is the financial like, equity? All that jazz. Uh, in terms of like your, there's not much variation between the the stages for competitors. Like there's not one competitor who like rolls the dice and it's like, oh, it's a six. So you got to like turn around and circle six times. Like none of that <laughs> stuff would would work in Ipsic. Uh, there's no randomness in it. It's supposed to be the same for everyone, and it's supposed to be fair because you are competing in, and it's very, it's a very serious competition. Whereas a lot of the uh, brutality matches, people are competing with themselves, and they want that uh, that authentic style. Anyways, I'm going on a really long rant here. Uh, if you want, if you want to compete in three gun, you got to run like doubles or or singles, and you have to run uh, these AR mags in Canada. So most people have been running uh, Beowulf mags until the uh, government decided those were no bueno, and then the 458, and those are no bueno. So they've been running LAR mags. Uh, you can run the 1030s, which look kind of like a 30 round mag, except they're crimped in the middle and they call them a pistol mag. But again, you'll need more mag pouches because on your belt you'll have 10, 20, and that's it. So if your stage needs 40 rounds, you're going to need to at least two of these doubles here. It gets a little bit bulky. It's not that bad. Um, but uh, again, most people go with the, with the coupled mags because you can just hold more, and it's more on the gun. Some people will even couple them side by side. That's where you get lots of, lots of uh, choice. Anywho, Cross Mag sent me some of their uh, some of their magazines. They're plastic uh, uh, magazines, and they are really neat for one thing: the coupler. So the, the mags themselves are really good. Like I, I think I mentioned to you guys before that uh, I was worried that because uh, this was like V1 of a product coming out and it was Canadian made, like uh, I, I've been bitten on Sorry, this. Sorry, Canada doesn't have a good track, Mark. Yeah, the 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 it, it hasn't been good, but these are really nice magazines they're really they well are. made and the thing that makes them cool is this coupler here so the metal ones some of these are good some of these are bad i don't know if you guys can see but that screw head it's bearing just a little bit on the metal and if this falls or gets twisted the wrong way this comes apart the springs go everywhere and your rounds get like thrown around like confetti 
And this didn't happen a lot uh, on three gun. That's why a lot of people will actually put tape here to uh, to hold them together. Uh, whereas what these guys have done is made like a coupling system that you can actually uh, reconfigure on them. They've got like these uh, these hooks. Uh, I don't know if you can see there, but the, like all four corners have a hook on them. Uh, so if you run it, well, want to run it, locking surfaces, yeah, yeah, the little locking surfaces. So if you want to run it uh, bullets forward uh, in a curved configuration, you can do that. Or if you run it, want to run it uh, opposite, uh, you can do that. Uh, or if you want to huh. run it backwards or straight, you can pull the floor plate off, uh, which is very quick. Here, let me just you right and there. Pull that guy I mean, off. Those couplers and your couplers are much much thinner than my coupler. Yeah. Yeah. Turn that, that coupler one? around, and now, if I couple these, it'll be like a, a straighter magazine, right? And these are both still bullets forward, or I can turn it backward, and it'll have a little bit of a curve there. Now, uh, the reason why you'd want to choose between forwards or backwards is... Uh, right here! It's right here! Huh? I'll tell you why in a second. Keep going, and okay. I'll tell you what I have to say. Bullets forward? Uh, you run out of run out of rounds. You grab it. You pop it in like that. Uh, if you want to uh, uh, run it the other way, where they're backwards, that way you would go like this, which I think I prefer going like that. Uh, but uh, I, I guess to each their own. And then the uh, angle gives you a choice of whether you want like a straight or like a, a more of a curved angle to it. The length. They're about the same as a 30 round mag, which is good yeah. because that's what almost all of these uh, mag pouches are made for because they're all made for the American market. They're all made to run a 30 and that gives you a nice big thing to grab onto and you're not going to be sticking your hand into that mag well at the same time when you're uh, when you're reloading them. So uh, pretty neat magazines, I think. And then they can yeah. also just be run by themselves. So you, yeah. can just, you can just run it as a 10 rounder if you want to. And uh, that would be handy for like hunting or something like that. I don't actually have a polymer 10 rounder for hunting. I've just got a metal one. Uh, I might prefer to run a, a, a plastic one just because it's it's got a little bit more of a tighter fit and it doesn't uh, rattle as bad as a, a metal one in there. Well, and with that, it's much easier to go and decouple those because they're specifically designed for it compared to something like this where like it's fucking screwed in there. Your lar coupler that's thinner than this is also fucking screwed in there. So it's slightly more of a pain in the ass to bother taking apart. I think you said yours replaces the butt plate on the mm -hmm. on those. This one doesn't replace the butt plate so when you loosen this, I mean, it might actually, it might be that it's supposed to and I just didn't read the manual, but this <laughs> one didn't replace the butt plates, mm -hmm. so um, I can just unscrew this and take the fucking mag out, but I still have to actually unscrew this. With those cross mags, they're designed to easily uncouple. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas, like, yeah, this one it slides into the uh, to the floor plate there. So, uh, if this thing comes out, springs go flying everywhere, ammo goes flying. It's, so everywhere. it's not really a coupler; it's a two sided but uh, plate. Yes, floor two sided plate. floor yeah. plate, and you can get them in a straight or a curved. I like the straight because they just hold tight to your body. Uh, uh, the curved ones are a little bit more ergonomic because as your hand's coming back to grab them and then pull it up, it's just a little bit more of a, an ergonomic angle. Um, but you can run straight if, if you fi find that those curved ones kind of jam into your side or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I don't really have a, much, a lot else to say about them. They work good with the uh, uh, Strip Lulu and that kind of thing. They've got like all the right like on the inside of them they've got little plastic guides to keep the springs from like hitting the outside. Like some of them won't have like a, like I don't know if you can see the lines in there but uh, they've got those molded in which is a good idea. Um, they hold like t like 10 and no more uh, which is also good. Some of the some of the mags are a little bit generous on their uh, on their tolerances, uh, and they'll still insert uh, on a on a full mag. So, uh, whoop, get that <laughs> off there. That's funny. And then get that tenth round in, and then there's ten rounds in there, and it's just got just a tiny little bit. So it will go on in on a closed bolt, but it won't get that eleventh round in. Yes. So is it is it a uh, a no tilt follower because those plastic guides on it there kind of or uh, the pl well, the plastic guides on the on the side of the magazine are uh, are to keep the spring centered and to reduce the friction on it. At least that's what I assume it is. I don't I didn't read their uh, their materials, but it does have a, a, a no tilt follower in here. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this, but like this thing is it works a treat for uh, for getting rounds out of a out of a magazine. 
This is going to be hard to yep. do. Like, yeah, the, uh, the, the 9mm of the logo I have also has a little tap for getting shit out. Okay, if it does, I've never noticed or attempted yeah, to use it. I always just no, actually, push them. I have it right here. It's at the back of the of the of the doohickey. Yeah, that one works too for that stuff. Yeah. I, I would go and find my maglula, but no, it's no, no, I got it. I got it right here. Uh, you don't need to get yours. Actually, hold on. Uh, okay. yeah, it is. Uh, where is it? Right this little tab on the back of it. You just run it again huh. out of the map, and that shits out the rounds really nicely. Yeah, yeah. I got the green one because it's pretty. And, it, and this is a legit up Lula. It's not the the oh, off one. That, that, the Lula. that shit right there is is what does it. Yeah, that's it. I've literally never noticed or cared about that, but it's okay. uh, it's nice. It helps, you know, for what it's worth. It's like it's fast for taking rounds out, which is kind of nice. Yeah. And then, I mean, uh, I've never noticed a particular slowdown just using my fingers, but then again, I never noticed a particular slowdown loading mags with my fingers. I bought that specifically because Glock mags are made by Satan. <laughs> Some of them are. The 10 rounders aren't bad. But uh, I don't know if you guys can see inside there. You see those little like ribs? Yep. That's to keep the that's to keep things aligned, keep the springs aligned to where they should be and whatnot. I think. I don't know. So uh, someone is asking if we are going to try streaming on Pornhub next because we've gone through like three or four different streaming platforms at this point. Like right now we're just kind of doing it for shits and giggles. Uh, yeah. Sure, we'll do Pornhub. I have a Pornhub account, so sure. I have a Pornhub creators account because I'm a Whoa. creator on Pornhub. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, sorry. Does, does Pornhub know. allow live streaming? Uh, <laughs> do you know what a cam girl is, sir? <laughs> yes, but a lot of them just run off of um, they run off Twitch and they run off some other site that I forget what the fuck it is. My free webcams. Hmm. That sounds like some shit straight I, uh, out I, the fucking nineties. That was 90s. a wild guess. I don't know if that's the kind of site they use. <laughs> uh, yeah. I know exactly what to look up to try and find it out, but I don't care enough. I just look up Project Melody. <laughs> <laughs> you weeb. Uh, yeah, drop free. I don't know. Uh, if uh, if I end up running a three-gun match, I think I might run these because I would much prefer those to the couple of lar mags that I've got um, just based off of like weight and size and whatever. Yeah. So Good angle. What I, was gonna, what I was saying earlier about those is in your AR... With the mag well in front of the grip, yep. yes, taking out the mag sideways, like with your with your hand turned upside down, turning it and putting it in, that works. That does not work with a bullpup. It doesn't. You basically would have to turn the rifles like you would have to because mm. you can. The whole point of this is to, for you to do it while it's still shouldering the rifle. So you take your hand, boop, pop it in. You cannot do that with the mag behind your grip hand. Because you would have to turn the gun sideways, get it off your shoulder, grab it, and put it in. For you to do that while still shouldering the book bump, what you do is you grab, basically, you, you, you turn the hand still a little bit. Yeah. But if you run in front to back, you can just drop it with your with your grip hand, because that's the thing with the RDB. The mag release, right? Yeah. In your thumb, so the, the, the heel of your thumb. You do that, you grab the mag, and you flip it over. Yeah, so that's so, you would need one that's coupled the other way. One exactly. way going this way, one way going that way, exactly. so that when you do yours, it's a flip from from front to back, or back yeah, to front. Exactly. Is, is there not a slight concern about recoil walking the rounds out of the other mag though, if it's facing backwards? No, the only no. like the the biggest issue with running coupled mags like this is when you drop your mag. So hopefully it's mostly empty and you're not like dropping it with a lot of force, but you drop it, it's going down on the feed lips and it's going to get mud and dirt in the feed lips. So for that, you need to be able to clean them and, and get the dirt out of there. Uh, uh, like Chaz is, is pretty muddy. And if, if you, <laughs> you imagine like dropping your feedlets like straight into the mud and getting it in there. So that's where like being able to de decouple them, pull the uh, floor plate off and then clean your magazine really quick would be really nice. Like if you watch, uh, if you watch Ipsic, a lot of those competitors, they clean their magazines uh, between stages when, they, when there's like a lot of dirt and, and dust and the kind of crap on the stage. Uh, and you would need to do the same thing if there was a lot of mud on your stage. So the ability to do that, like for me to do that with these mags would take me four times longer. Like I'd have to bring an Allen key, I'd have to like dick around with it uh, on the stage. 
Yeah. So I'm I'm curious because you mentioned that you were questioning the reliability of the the couple there um, when that's dropped. If you're going to be doing a review of the cross mags, I'd be curious to see kind of like drop test comparisons between the cross mags and the coupled lar mags in terms of like staying coupled and any kind of potential issues that arise from that. You have to put a lot of abuse on the mag for it to fail. Um, with these ones, it's always like that that fails I've, I've actually replaced <laughs> i replaced the bolt on mine with a bigger headed one the other one it had like just a cunt hair holding on to the uh the mag itself and with that if you like ram on if that magazine's in your gun and something's stuck or you're like you've, you've got a stuck round or a double feed like that and you rip that thing out of there that's where you start to have uh, uh magazine failures that could happen with these cross mags like you could potentially uh rip at it when it's in there and and like do one oh, of these wow. like if you really get uh, rough with it but that's it you still have a working mag here you still have a working mag here so at the worst you can be like get that one out and dump that one in right whereas with this guy here <laughs> the, the parts and the, the bullets are all over the place and i've seen that happen uh i don't know like four or five times at, at, at three gun So, yeah. It's only for competition, though. The thing I'm curious about is, what if you, like, and I, I have another guy at uh, at one of our matches does this. He runs them coupled like this. And then you got 40 rounds on your gun. <laughs> Damn. And then you, you run it like that. So for him, he runs those rounds, and he goes like that, and then he runs the other ones, and he flips it upside down, and boom, and boom, and just lots of, well, again, because it's all about trying to keep stuff off your belt. It's always faster to just drop your mag and go to the belt and grab another one because you do both those things at the same time, right? You uh, you shoot till you're empty. You see that you're empty. You drop and you move your hand at the same time. Hand comes up with the next magazine. Bolt goes forward and you're on to the next one. It's always faster. But it's just not economical for space to have like a gajillion 1030s on your belt. I think I've talked about magazines too much. Nope, I like it. No? Okay. <laughs> uh, you, said, uh, you kind of offhandedly said, when did they say the 458s were no good too? Uh, when someone asked them? I think the moral of the story is not to ask. You don't have to. Yeah. You don't have to ask. Imagine this is the U.S. military, you're gay, and it's the 70s. <laughs> don't ask, don't good. tell. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because, like, uh, for magazines, uh, you can just, they're, according to the law, the RCMP might have their messed up opinion that won't hold up in court. You can just say, okay, well, I'm just not going to ask for that. Moral of the story is, just shut the fuck up. Well, I mean, like, when it comes to shooting, like, and, and some of this stuff, some people are of the opinion that you should never talk about any of this stuff because... Uh, the wrong person might find out, right? And that is a risk. But it's also a risk that uh, new shooters don't take up this hobby because they don't know what you can or can't do, and they come up with dumb ideas about it. And uh, Oh, I come across that on the daily. The amount of stupid ideas that I get asked on the sub. I just, yeah. just go, go, go put it on the newbie thread. Somebody yeah. will downvote you yeah. and yell at you. Oh, uh, lar mags are good for 10, so I took the pin out of my SKS. That's okay, right? No. That's not okay. Why not? Oh. You're running ten in your rifle. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Why that's don't a I pistol take mag. A, that's you know an what? SKS. Somebody actually said that. Somebody like somebody made that post. It was like, well, uh, well, I'm going to take my SKS and I'm going to put in the uh, uh, the magwell adapter, and then I'm going to weld an XER ten round mag to it, and I'm going to have ten rounds in it. Yeah, well, you can put it. You can put rounds. a magwell adapter in an yeah, SKS. But he then... said no. He was going to weld the XCR 10 rounder to it, and he's going to make a permanently attached fixed 10 round mag. Which at that point, you have then adapted that magazine to be an SKS magazine, according to the RCMP. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. And people promptly yell at him. I had to tell people to fuck off, because they were being rude. Thank yeah. you for your submission to the Canada Gun subreddit. <laughs> Kindly <laughs> shove it up your ass. <laughs> I, I I am beginning to understand the uh, the attitude of the moderators and figure subs that are just so completely jaded. Just like they 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 can't they can't take anything else. 
because they've been reduced to shells of their former selves. But enough about moderating. Adriel, did you do anything else gun related other than do max stuff and re Uh I sold some guns. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And uh that is all. Are I you probably sure? bought something. I probably bought stuff I'm just not I just can't remember. Uh, you you're forgetting, sir. You murdered living animals. Oh, I went and shot like a pile of gophers. That is right. Yep. I went uh I went and did some social distanced gopher shooting. And uh, it was a good time. Just brought out the twenty two. Like I've got other rifles that I could take out that would uh give me like long range, uh uh big damage kind of stuff, but I like twenty twos for just nice, simple, quiet, um and uh running them with a with a, a hasty sling, which is where you stick your arm through and like kinda of wrap it around and then put it on the stock there. Uh, I was able to make some some a lot of standing shots out to around 40 meters, uh, which you end up seeing a lot of gophers inside 40 meters, uh, and uh, being able to make those standing shots on them is uh, is really good. Feels really good too, but uh, don't have to get down. You know, I had been using a uh, I started off with like a prone bipod, which you, like lay down on your on your stomach. You don't see a lot of gophers like that, and the ones you do see, like by the time you get down prone they're over a hill or something like that. There's always something in the way. Then I went to a sitting bipod, and that's fantastic. If there's if, there, if it's a target-rich environment, sitting bipod is by far the way to go. Uh, you just go cross-legged, bipod out, wrap your hands like this, and you can you can make some really long shots like that. But uh, more than those, just standing with a hasty sling and uh, uh, proper brace, good breathing technique... One other thing that I that I was using that I found uh, works really well is uh, uh, making little eights over the target, and as you're coming down uh, through the cross, that's where you press the trigger and that's where you make your shot. So forcing the wobble rather than trying to fight it, uh, that works really good for some people. It worked really good for me, and uh, yeah, yeah, shot a bunch of gophers. I'll shoot more once they have babies. Fuck yeah, and hopefully. I can get in on that by talking to a friend of mine who, a friend of the family, my stepdad, who goes go for shooting. Or maybe I'll be in Edmonton. Hopefully. That would be nice. Go for shooting's fun. Um, anything else in your age room? I forget stuff left and right, so I don't know. The, the days just seem to like mold into each other and. I don't know. Maybe I've got like a gun in the mail and I just completely blanked on it. Who knows? That's probably yeah. possible. Um, I guess that's me next. Yeah. Well, Adriel, congratulations. You have earned the badge of official Celtic gunsmith. I am a because good gunsmith. Your, your suggestion to uh, Gorilla Glue the butt plate that broke on this RDB worked. <laughs> it worked. Um, as Adriel is going to talk about later regarding his survey, uh, yes, this RDB, this RDB, to the guy that asked, uh, Sir, what is it, Sir Cheeseham? Sir Lord Baron Von Cheeseham. Yes, uh, Sir Lord Baron Von Cheeseham. This? Cheeseham. Cheeseham. This RDB, Celtic, it's half the price of a Tavor. Takes an egg max and it's got the best out of the box full pop trigger in the market, in my opinion. Mm, not better than the M17. You sure? The M17 comes with an Elfman trigger. Okay, so well, there you go. Is that a new M17 or the old M17? Uh, I don't know. New, new, new one. The new one with the aluminum and stuff, but that's also a lot more expensive. Yes. Yeah, it's got the best trigger for the price. Definitely, the RDB does. Yes. Yeah. Um, although I haven't tested the RFB. Have you played with that thing? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Is it was the trigger okay? Because I don't remember. The, uh, I don't, I I don't remember. Anything about that. Well, um, some of the concerns about it is the handguard. It's plastic. It's awful. It's huge. It's gaudy. It only has plastic rails on the bottom. And uh, it does not make the barrel free floated. 
Not that the barrel can be free floated because the way that the handguard attaches is through the uh, push pin that goes through the front trunnion that is used for the gas block. So the gas, the handguard is attached to the gas block and then it <coughs> engages a pair of studs on the receiver walls on the back here. That's how the handguard is in place. Um, the mag release is, as I showed it before, is this. <laughs> It's actually a, a leaf set, like a, like a, a, a piece of bent metal spring. spring. Yep. Yeah. Neat. And the mag release is, uh, and the bolt release is these two buttons on either side. And I was watching somebody say that the proper... Oh, I have a mag right there. Yeah, you gotta model that for us. You gotta show us how this thing works. You can't just talk. We need yeah. action. It's an empty mag, like whatever. So you put the... Put the... the mag in and what the guy was saying is what you do is you insert the mag and then you take your thumb up and pull it down i don't have weak hands i don't have strong hands i have average hands that doesn't seem like it would go with me Dude, can you the just like slap it that is if you're locking the bolt back if you're locking the bolt back and pulling it up then you can. You're HP not going to do that. So, like, no. what what else can you do with that bolt release to to rapidly activate it? The only thing that I found that works is you pinch the receiver, the receiver, and you pull down on both. Mm -hmm. Okay, your hand, your face is. You can't do it with your hand with your head down on the gun. I don't think like even because if you do. I don't do that with an AR either, though. Right, you wouldn't do this like that. Like you'd have to fucking reef down on that on that uh, bolt release to do that. Like with no, the... no, but but you're supposed to like engage one button with your chin <laughs> while you slap the other one. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. See, that that, that makes no sense. Well, what uh, does it what does it look like? It, like, don't put your face to it because. Uh... I th like with it with an AR reload, I'm not gonna hold my face to it while I do this. I'll probably hold it about here. I'll just grab this one so it can like it, that'll be my one that's going down here. I would probably go like this, and then I would pull, I would I would pop that back down on the gun. My face would not be on the on that gun the whole time. I would pop it up a little bit so I have some control so I can turn the and, port to my. And face. the only way that I see this working is pinching the receiver, okay, pushing it down. Oops. And you go back down to it. The mag release um, is pretty ergonomic, though, right? Like, if you're holding that thing straight up and down, just show us your mag release on it. So, what they, they, they there's two suggestions. You either, with your grip hand, kind of let, like, kind of push back with your thumb, and it will drop it. What they suggest in the Celtic manual is to grab the mag and, and strip it. Lame. Yeah, no one's, no one's doing that. No. <laughs> just. But, yeah, hit it with the back of your knuckle, right? But if you, what I did here is if you're if you're Call of Duty tactic cooling it, your hand is kind of close to the receiver. So on recoil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do so that, don't that be tactic cool. Chicken wing works because it's comfortable and it keeps your hand away from the receiver, so you won't drop the knife. But what if you get? A failure to eject, a failure to feed, a double feed, or something. That's the big problem with bullpups. Cry. Now. Cry in a corner. Yeah, just throw your gun down and grab your backup gun, because yeah. it'll be faster than trying to fix it. So you take the mag out, you try to lock this thing back, and it goes to about here. And I'm saying this from experience, folks. So it goes to about here, and you're like, well, what the fuck do I do here? So you go, uh, uh, and you refund it, and nothing's happening. So what do you do is you have to visually inspect the chamber. And to do that, you have to turn the whole gun around. There's no other way to do it. Oh, look at that. You can see into the action. That shiny bit is the Kinda. base of the bolt. Okay? When there is two rounds stuck in there, you're shit out of luck. There is no way for you to hold that bolt back if it's just jammed in there. That's what I was doing. So, you do what every single person that knows what to do with a stuck case or a bolt that doesn't want to move is you hit it with something. 
or you hit it against something. Hold or the handle or something. You got to get that mass of the bolt moving somehow and you need an assist. What you do is you grab this bad boy, you find something sturdy to hit it against, and you hit the butt as you bring the rifle down and you hold onto the charging handle. That will clear it. It's called mortaring. People have been doing it for years. Well, 50? <laughs> no, yeah. It's with, a, with a stock wolf. Uh, I suppose with a, a, a Garand or something like that, you use your foot too. You put your, your foot on yeah. top of that charging handle. No, you with a charging handle, like, if you can get the bolt to unlock, but it's stuck because the case is in there, you fucking kick the bolt. Yeah, yep. with shitty Chinese ammo in my SVT, I've had to stomp on the bolt handle twice. Yep. One time it actually sheared the fucking rim of the case off, and I had to, to go and take the cleaning rod and a shotgun rod and a hammer and fucking hammer the case out of the chamber. <laughs> Good stuff. Ruined the shotgun cleaning rod in the process. Yeah. So how'd that mortaring go? Uh, good. It cleared the malfunction, and then it shattered the butt plate. <laughs> yeah. As you can see right there, um, it's completely it completely split down the middle, basically. It and looks like see, that part. That bit of metal for... right there. This is this is the receiver. The receiver stops right halfway on the butt plate. So. It is held to the receiver with two screws right here where my fingers are. And this is all plastic, completely unsupported. There is nothing back here. Nothing. So it, it sounds to me like the Keltec was just shedding unnecessary weight uh, by, by doing this. Yeah. And that you just need to readjust your shoulder grip to the new slimmer contact surface. Possibly. It would also that be stock a should different. be stronger. Because I mean, like you're, you'd never break off this on a, on an AR, no. but and that this like you do mortar them because like with a charging handle on an AR doesn't give you a lot of purchase, and the no. weight of that BCG when you strike this thing down wants to keep moving and will extract. So a, I will I will case. interject right there and mention that I was watching uh, remediation drills and remediation uh, teaching, like yeah. like a guy just going to like. How can an AR-15 fuck up? And this guy was teaching it to a bunch of uh, army uh, people in the states, and he's like, "Okay, like let's go through the uh, like the like, what is it, the sequence of fire." So it's like it's like it's fire unlocked. For, uh, stage one, stage two, st or yeah, type, like, type one, like, type two, type three. No, 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 no. This guy went. Like, it was way deeper. It was like it was like the eight steps of a fire sequence. It's like fire, unlock, eject. Cock, feed, no, no, eject, cock, strip, feed, chamber, and fire. This is again. way too complicated for crayon eaters. I, you said this guy was an army t trainer? Yeah, no, like this This was like the, I think this was being taught to like the marksmanship school or something like that. So it was the crayon eaters that had more aptitude than the other. Mm. Um, but what they said is regarding collapsible buttstocks like those that you have is before you mortar it, collapse it all the way because bring that up again. There's a, there's a, I wanted to mention it, but I, I didn't want to stop your RDB story there. Uh, there's a video of a guy who has it like right about here yeah. and he goes like this and he mortars it and he gets his finger stuck in there. Good. <laughs> Real good. Oh, I want to hurt. Oh, cause like there's, there's not really much. There's like this little Paul here and yeah. if you whack it, it's, it's going to slip on you and it's going to go down there and pinch the crap out of your finger. So if you're not getting pinched, what you can do is you can break that part. Yeah. And break the pin that holds the, the stock in its uh, different uh, positions. Yeah. So that's what they say is if you're going you to... You might anyways, but... Ah. No, no, you won't. You won't, because when you have it collapse all the way, it's actually just making contact with the castle nut. Uh, not this one. Not quite, yeah. Well... Okay. It, it'll, it'll bend a bit. Who cares? It's cheap. And at least this way, it's not going to fuck up one of the... Like, because no one actually runs them this tight. No one's going to run no. a, a carbine stock this tight. Actually, no. So if you screwed no, up that ones, one... I've seen people run them that small when they haven't played carry. Yes, actually, that is a good point. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't run it all the way collapsed. Like, that's, like, even with a plate carrier, that's quite a bit out on me, and it's still, <laughs> yeah, I would I would need a little bit more. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Who knows? It's tough to say exactly 
what dimensions would be required to have it all the way collective. It's possible for anybody to do it. Maybe a kid with a plate carrier. I don't know. Maybe it's Somalia. Okay. No, you're wearing this... a plate carrier and a parka over top of it or some shit. Like, yeah. yeah, that's true. Maybe a backpack. There's a small gun, too. It hurts. Yes. It's, it's mostly a pistol. I've shot uh, this thing would... as a pistol. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. Justifying like, those is... larm eggs. Yeah, this is, it's, it's light. That's a that's a brace right there for all of our American viewers, right? And you can you can totally fire it as a pistol. It's very accurate, very accurate pistol, most accurate <laughs> pistol I got. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's the RGB. I really don't have much complaints other than the fact that the butt plate is kind of crap and the handguard is kind of crap. Uh, how does it perform? Uh, beautifully. Uh, it's got an adjustable gas system, so if for any reason I was doing some stupid, like for example, downloading my two two threes so that I don't have to use too much powder in my in my loads. I could potentially tune the gas set. I could potentially tune the load to run on the lowest gas setting. It might work. Actually got it backwards. I would have to open up the gas setting as much as possible. There you go. Yeah. Right in your adverse. Uh what, is it uh numbered? No, it's just uh it's a spin uh, I don't like that. I like the numbers. I like the numbers because then you, it's like repeat more repeatable. Yes, but there's a problem associated with that, and there's a problem associated with this, which is too much graduation, like too many, too much selection, because that was apparently a big, big problem with the uh, MDR. No, the FALs, the, oh. the old FALs, like the first generation of FALs. I was watching an in-range video mm -hmm. where Ian was talking about how uh, I think it was the Israelis when they first got them. Their Israeli FAL, they're, they're, um, they had like basically like almost like a micrometer gas block, and it was just like a click and a click and a click, and they would go nowhere with those things, nowhere because the grunts would fuck around with the gas things. Like this is fucking broken, so they would like move it around and completely fuck up their uh, their feeding and ejecting huh. with that. But um, I love the charging handle. I love you can do the HK snap with it. Um, is it ambi? Yes, it's reversible. Ah, cool. Yeah, you have to uh, um, pop the handguard off, break down the rifle, because when you break down the rifle, you poop you, you poop out uh, two pins, front and, uh, and middle of the gun, then the uh, upper kind of like, like the whole gun splits in half and you can take How out. How can you pull the bolt out. out? Let's see you pulling the bolt out of that thing. You could describe it to us or you could just yeah, do it I'm and it's, it'd be way more educational. I think that's what I have to do. Where's the hell? I've only done this like twice, so now I'm feeling embarrassed. So I can, you can also just rip out the. Uh, oh, where are you? Uh, there it is. Oop, come on. Oh, don't make me pull out the third. Gonna need some more gorilla glue when you're done doing this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, zing! <laughs> I haven't done this in a while. That's what she said. There's the handguard. Okay, yeah. Oh, there's not a lot, not a lot going on there. What the hell is the? I can't remember how to do this. Oh, does the bolt have to be back? No, it doesn't. No, I'm trying to remember how to fucking do it. I've got it. <laughs> I've got it up to this point. Well, it's, it's so long story short, two pins. Yeah, it's two pins, and, and you can break it in half and do yeah, do more of what and you pull need. your bolt out and whatnot. That's all right. Well, I'll have to figure that out later. Did um, you dry fire it? Does a gun need to be cocked in order to disassemble it? I have to put it back together because I don't want to do it without the fucking guts in place. Come on, get in there. One. Two. It's probably, you know what I mean? Actually, that makes a little more sense. Oh, oh, that's stick now. Sorry, I made you broke your, break your gun. Well, gun broke again. Like one of the cool things about uh, modern firearms is just how easy it is to get to the bolt. A lot of uh, like try that with your M1 Garand. It uh, it takes a while. It's not a it's not a quick thing to. Yeah, you have to do like the whole tilted like a little bit, and you have to fuck around. Yeah, with one or it's all janky and whatnot. Whereas, I mean, if you want to, uh, if you want the to AR on is on an great. AR. It's you, one pin. You push one pin. You 
pull that pin out, out comes that, and then there's your bolt. That's just such a such a simple breakdown. Uh, well, Crover, you decocked it. Try try leaving it cocked and taking it apart. No, it, it cannot be. It cannot be. The hammer assembly is going to be in the lower, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Something's holding on there. Huh? Something's holding on. It's not the camera if it's forward or backwards. Something happens. The fuck? That was that was literally the last idea I had because that was the only thing I could think of that would be connecting the lower to the upper would be the hammer going between the two. So I, I'm missing something and it's gonna be so dumb when I figure it out. <clears throat> Maybe a bit of that gorilla glue spread a bit further than you expected. <laughs> <laughs> Just fuse the whole thing together. Like this, this this upper is supposed to separate from this lower. I know it is. And then you get the barrel assembly basically. Try like applying moderate pressure up and back and side to side and twisting and turning and grab it by the muzzle device and swing it around. Just look it up already. Just look it up already. I'm getting annoyed at this. <laughs> but yeah, but one thing that I was going to say is that you're right, Adriel. There isn't a whole lot going on in this barrel. It is a thin barrel. So when you shoot this, like when you do like a 10 round mag dump from a LAR mag, it holds the groups at like two to three inches. But then the next mag, oh man, the next mag is like a five, six inch group. It, that is bad. Opens up. Well, but, it's thin and it's not free no, floated. And... No, uh, no point of impact shift hmm. that I noticed. So it, it's the bigger group, but it's right on the money and where it was secured. Yeah. Oh, God, to Interesting. Huh. I mean, some some barrels on ARs don't do well with, uh, with heat. I had a I had a 16-inch barrel. This is oh, it's like a 10-year-old barrel. It's probably got about 50,000 rounds through it too. But to start out, somebody, be fine. is somebody looking this up? Am I alone on this? Huh? Yeah, you're you're definitely alone on this. Uh, I'm, I've been switching the camera to me though, just to not have it on you the whole time when and watch you struggle. Great, fucking find out how to take this thing apart. Makes fantastic video though. Can't be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I had I had an AR uh, barrel that that uh, one it got hot it the it would just spray and pray that's why i went to a, a medium profile nicer match barrel and that thing's fantastic i can i can cook like some some of our stages we'll get up to like 40 rounds and we're shooting long range we're shooting out to like three four hundred yards you don't want it to be opening up on you so i got a bit of a heavier barrel and that thing works really really well even hot. oh i am so fucking dumb i'm taking down the wrong fucking pin oh, there's four <laughs> pins on this there are four pins on this. Ah, we need the last pin. Saving that private pin. It's going to work oh. now. It's going to work. It's not going to work now. Oh, 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 I got movement. Just keep, yeah, keep taking pins out. Yeah, I'll take all of them out. Sure. There's a question here. How many rounds would you t uh, would it take to compromise accuracy on a pencil barrel, you figure? I think it depends on the pencil barrel. Like compromise from, from accuracy? Compromise the accuracy. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. And that's something that, uh, what was it? Like, Henry, ah, there you go. See? Lower pops out when you take out all the three pins. Mm -hmm. Then you slide the whole thing forward. There is the barrel yeah. assembly with the handguard and the bolt and guide rod. I know that's the bolt and the, uh, the, what is this, the piston? Yes, that's yeah. a that's unibot wow. Well. Like an AK. Yeah. yeah. And uh captive dive rod and spring. Yeah. Where's and the uh what's it locking into? What's the bolt air? locking into? It's an air it's an it's a air one eighty, air fifteen style bolt. Oh I, the bolt looked or the barrel looks small, I didn't see the extension there. Oh uh, well the extension oh, what do you mean the barrel was small? There I, I might have been looking at the wrong thing. There it is. It looks oh, in the video. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this actually, we can talk about something that we're going to segue into, which is your uh, reliability survey. One of the concerns, apparently, that, about these rifles is that 
the rail works, which I'm not sure how that would be attainable. And that's the optic rail. Is the optic rail made of plastic? No. No, it's metal. I did the two <laughs> So yeah, by the way, that's how you that's how you uh, change the uh, the hand the, the charging handle. So I can understand. Take out the huh. Interesting. There it is. Put it in the other way. Here you go. Bada bing, bada boom. So I can understand where the concern would be if that thing was plastic, given the fact that it's sitting right on top of the uh, of the gas block at the front there, yes. and that's going to be a source of a lot of heat. Yes. Um. But that's it. Like. I don't see how you could shoot enough to heat this up, cause this part to heat at oh, a different rate than this one. That oh, stuff yeah. is going to get smoking hot, dude. The gas oh, blocks yeah. on an AR-15 get oh, the hot. Gas block. The gas block. Well, actually, this is a piston, so all the gas is being vented. The barrel's still hot, though. The hottest part is right in front of the barrel. That's yeah. where that's see, so, so that's... Like uh, that back part there is going to get a lot more heat than the part up fo uh, forward of that a little bit more. So imagine, I, I maybe what happens is that rear part heats up and that starts to expand just a little bit and then your scope starts to aim down a little bit more. See, but would you expect that to heat up more or the front gas block to heat up more because the gas is coming through there to actuate the is piston? Is the front part the gas block? Yeah. The front part's a gas block. The gas block. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. That would that well, would I probably could see the gas more. block yeah. heating a lot more. And if that's that's going to be steel, and the top's going to be aluminum, there's going to be a differential there mm -hmm. in terms of of that. And I can see potentially some issues there, given the fact that steel has a like you can heat steel more than you can heat aluminum, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. I might be mistaken. Uh, this is in grade, uh, grade 11 uh, science. Grade. For a long but time. I'm pretty sure you can heat steel more than you can heat aluminum. So if you're fucking like just mag dumping that shit nonstop, I could see how having aluminum attached onto steel there could cause some kinds of issues. Yeah. But you'd have to be like really fucking like you're sitting there with a chest full of lar mags and just fucking well, giving her. I'm trivia if somebody wants to give me all the ammo. Just run a three gun match. You've got a three gun club in your. Uh... At your range. All, my, all my matches are cancelled. Oh, yeah, well, good point. Yeah, they all are cancelled. Nice. Uh, back to the, yeah, uh, the question. One, so one of the guys there asked how many how many rounds would it take to compromise compromise accuracy on a pencil barrel? It really depends on the on the quality of the pencil barrel. Um, like a low quality one will uh, uh, will start spitting them a little bit worse than a than a high quality one, in my opinion. And I believe that's what they found as well. Um, I'm not sure though. Although, if properly stress relieved, that's one of the things that the What Would Stoner Do project address. Yeah. If the barrel is properly stress relieved, yes, a pencil thin barrel is going to see an impact in group size quicker than a heavier profile barrel, but it will not see a point of impact shift. Hmm. And then the other thing to consider is that um, here in Canada, we <laughs> we we don't run, we don't get to run full cap thirty round mags, so hmm. we're we're never gonna burn up like 30 rounds reload 30 rounds oh, again right. we're never going to have those thing. high high rate of fire ch uh, things happening to us uh but they do in the u.s and i mean that's like if you were to think of like how an m4 is going to be used in the military that's what's going to happen so they are made to to handle that kind of heat and that kind of uh, uh rate of fire um so I don't know. so that's what i was doing wrong you don't take out the handguard pan you don't take out the butt plate pin. What you take out is the two middle ones, and that does this to the upper. I mean, okay. to the uh, to the uh, yeah. uh, receiver and the 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 trigger. Then you just take this, slide the whole thing over. Goes all the way to the front. Come on, and you close it up, and it's good to go. It's not bad. Some parts look a little bit fiddly, but all, all in all, not bad at all. If you think mm -hmm. about, like, if that was an AK, you'd have to be dicking around with the dust cover at this point, and you're not doing that with this yeah. one. Yeah. Go.
cool, cool. Hey, there you go. Worst. Yeah. Uh, you did a survey, sir. I did. Do you want me to pull it up? Good. Uh, how... Oh, yeah, I could just do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One second. Let me go. One second, one second, one second. So I did this big survey. I got just under a thousand responses. Here is the results. Uh, so this is a reliability survey I did. And the reason why I did it was because there's a couple of guns that um, people have been reporting issues with. And I didn't know if it was a problem with how many guns there were out there or it was uh, these guns are just not good guns. So I uh, that's why I wanted to do the reliability survey. I didn't really trust the manufacturers or retailers to give like a, a, a proper weighted response here. So that's why I wanted one from the community. Um, I left it open to people to add whatever the gun they wanted to. They added a whole bunch of guns where I, I might have only gotten one or two. They added some guns where I got uh, up to five. Uh, that's what the ones down here. Some things to report on there. The FX9, some people reported that mags uh, were a big thing. And that's because, like, there's Glock mags, there's KCI mags, there's a bunch of other ones out there. So uh, some of those no-name brand mags people had issues with. Were with you intending FX9. to be sharing your screen with this because it's not showing I'm up? I'm sharing it with everyone except for you guys. Uh, and that's <laughs> just you? easier. Oh, oh okay, are. yeah, it does show up there yeah. when I check the stream there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, HKSL8. Uh, everyone reported that they work great. Uh, ISSC M22 Hammer Spring sub 2000s. They reported some issues. They got some good service. Again, I can't really pull away too much uh, results or analysis from these ones because they weren't statistically significant. The Mini 14, we, we actually did get uh, a bunch of entries on that, and they're all just 100%. So uh, that one was boring, um, but it was very good. With the FX9, I remember hearing, I think that one only likes aftermarket mags. It doesn't work with factory Glock mags or something like that. Like there's there's weird. a couple of carbines I've heard of where they're like, mm -hmm. yeah, use aftermarket mags, don't use factory ones, and it's really stupid. Isn't that, isn't that kind of the opposite of how it should be? Because everybody has it, a mother. I have fucking yeah. mother. I have a Glock. <laughs> I, I have, actually, I only have, I have one factory Glock mag, and then I have Three Magpul mags. Oh, okay. I think I got like eight. Anyways, um, so ATRS Modern Supporter, it's sold as a uh, build kit, and I believe ATRS will build them for you if you if you want them to. So there, both of those are options. Um, most people reported no failures. Like it was pretty good uh, rate on there. There were a couple of uh, people who reported like some fit and finish things with them. Um, all of them, everyone who had a fit and finish issue. Uh, pretty much reported that the service was quick. So uh, this was this was okay. I don't really care. Like if someone had said it was unreliable, I would say, well, you built it wrong. So I'm glad to see that no one said that because I wouldn't have trusted them anyways. Yeah, there's there's some notes about that later if I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah. Uh, the BCL 102. This was one that I was curious uh, about. Um, about and it really like when you some people talk about like flipping a coin uh, when you buy it when you buy a gun. Uh, this is flip. This is definitely flipping a coin because you're about a half, half and half, uh, no failures versus unreliable or major catastrophic failures. And major catastrophic failures would be like parts breakage and that kind of thing. Um, so by and large, uh, a lot of unreliable ones. Uh, with this, uh, down at customer support, uh, a lot of people reported like pretty poor support. Uh, just a few said that it was like nice and speedy and helpful. And I think that's changed over time. Uh, depends on on when you contacted them, but uh, it's uh, it's changed. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm still wondering guys, whose dick they had to suck to get super speedy and helpful support. <laughs> yeah, it, it depends if they had a support guy at the time, isn't that right, Adriel? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like the, like when I was asking for support in November, December, like the responses I were getting, I was getting were pretty quick, uh, and I even got stuff mailed out pretty quickly. It was the wrong stuff; like it, it wasn't ever going to solve it, but uh, uh, the responses were quick. Like I can say get that. Get a gold star for trying. Yes. Yeah. So uh, uh, this is this is pretty bad. The, like the, the, just calling the, calling it how it is this is pretty bad. There were some Mark Sevens in here as well. I know people have been wondering like, hey, is this the, this thing supposed to be fixed with the Mark Seven? And I think uh -huh. we've seen both in in the subreddit and on the survey that uh, yeah. uh, it it maybe some of the parts have been fixed, but not all of them because yeah. a lot of people are still having uh, parts breakage or just general unreliability with ejection and, and extraction. 
Uh, the SU-16, I was curious because I've seen these things crack the receivers, and I wanted to know, uh, is that, does that Me? happen to a lot of people? I remember specifically being told by a store the SU-16 is one of the only guns that you very much cannot fire 556 out of a 223 chambered gun in because it will crack the receiver. And uh, I, th I think it's just a quantity of rounds thing as well. It's it's a plastic receiver at the back. The part yeah. line is right there uh, because it's like a, a mold with two things that, that clamp together right there. And uh, major catastrophic failure, 25%. You've got a you've got a one in four chance of of your SU sixteen uh, of of killing it, and it's not just like you broke a charging handle or something like that. It's like the receiver's toast. Um, Damn. Yeah. And then twenty five yeah. percent of people had shockingly bad support. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if if your receiver broke and you're out of warranty. Uh, is it grab? No, I was I was I was telling you who that went through. Um, Fault. Gravel. No, it's vault. It's vault. No, vault. It's vault. It's vault. Yeah. The, the thing is with that is, yeah, because uh, uh, someone in the other in the, on one of the other guns, they're saying vault is really good. So maybe I think with this one, it might be that. Uh, keep in mind, like when you survey people, you get biases in there all the time. Like one of the biases we get with this is, if the gun is more expensive, people will be more picky about fit and finish. Uh, another bias is if people feel personally invested in the gun. They may be more un more willing to overlook uh, some uh, some issues with it. I will admit, um, I was in that camp with the WK. I was willing to defend it until I kind of just took a step back and realized that, uh, <laughs> Adriel, you're going to tell the result. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it, with with the SU-16, I think um, if you had one of these things for a couple of years and it went out of warranty, and you busted the receiver on it, uh, and you're like, "Yo, my receiver broke," and they're like, "Sorry, it's out of warranty. It's going to cost you." What would a receiver cost? Five hundred bucks. Uh, See, the thing is, though, be, doesn't you would be pissed. Doesn't Caltech have a limited lifetime warranty for the first owner, and only the first owner? Because I remember hearing that it's like they've got a great yeah. warranty, but it's only the first owner of the gun who gets it. So if you bought a secondhand Caltech, just don't don't buy a secondhand Caltech. Yeah, yeah. So that might be why we're seeing so many people saying this. It, like maybe vault super speedy, but the warranty is only for the sec for only for the first user. And if they break receivers and you can't get a new receiver and they cost like a lot, you might be choked about it. Because I mean, at that point, your gun, the receiver is legally the gun. Your gun has broken, <laughs> and then there's no fixing it. Maybe with a lot of epoxy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've already determined that Gorilla Glue is great at fixing Caltex. Maybe try Gorilla, Gorilla Glue gluing your Caltex. fucking SU16 back together. <laughs> Go. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Maccabee SLR. Uh, a lot of people uh, reported fit and finish. Now uh, we we had heard about uh, some issues with the anodizing. Um, some people reported uh, pinholes being too small, magwells being too tight, uh, and that kind of thing. Um, but the the nice thing here is that they did like most people didn't use the support. The people who did found it was very super speedy and helpful. So uh, this is saying that. You know, especially with new products coming out to the Canadian market, specifically for Canada, I think we're going to have issues no matter what. It's just nice when a company backs things up and uh, and fixes it quickly afterwards. Uh, Narinko M14. I would be curious. I would love to know how many of these survey results were from like recent M14s and how many of them were older. Like, not like the older ones were any better, but the most recent ones have MIM bolts. Uh, metal ejection molding, and that process is uh, is not great for a bolt. And there no. there have been reports of bolts uh, failing uh, on these things. Um, so a lot of people report issues. Even the ones that report like no failures, like there was a couple of people in there, like oh I put a scope mount on it and it started jamming with the cases in there, but it's reliable otherwise. It's like yeah, I guess. I mean, you got you got to tune the bolts if you want to put a scope on there because otherwise it, it'll it'll fling the cases right up. Well, and you're you're kind of doing something the gun's not really designed for. The gun's not really designed for a scope to go on it there. So you, can you blame the gun when you are going outside of its design spec? I mean, like it's got, that? it's got a hole drilled into the side of it and tapped so that you can put a scope mount on it. But Does yeah. it actually? Yeah, yeah, the M14s mm. have that stuff like designed into them. They're just not good for it. And the other issues are, are like uh, over-indexed barrels, uh, sights that are all the way up to one side or the other, uh, 
uh, op rods that are sloppy in the op rod guide, that kind of thing. So uh, I would I would say that the M14s like, are oh, op yeah, rod the M14, guns. There's no Rinko M14, the M305. They're great. You know, they're like 600 bucks, and then you have to put another 600 bucks to uh, fix the problems with it. Well, you don't have to put a... 600. Like you can you can do it for less, but it is definitely a project gun. It's a good gun if you like to tinker. It's not the a good thing... gun if you want one like out of the box, like perfect. The only thing is, I'm doubtful that the Springfields are going to be a huge amount better, and they cost three times as much. Oh, yeah, even more. Like they're they're super pricey, and I mean these these. Keep in mind that the M305s used to be three ninety nine. Like I bought one at three ninety nine, and at that price, I don't care if the barrel's over indexed. I can go to one of those clinics, and I can get that barrel fit that that barrel issue fixed, or I can you know do something else to uh, uh, to fix it. Right? Yeah. Now they're like fucking up to eight hundred bucks in some places, and that's, ah, that's too much. Like I was contemplating yeah. when they were still like five fifty, maybe, but like when they went up to like seven ninety nine, I'm like, ah, oh, fuck this. This is this is just not. Yeah. China's just getting greedy now. Yeah, and I love that there there is no support available for these guns. No. You're on your own. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or, or you might you might get some support from your local retailer. You'd have to ask them though, and it's probably going to be like, no, final. Sale. I think the only company who ever offered a warranty on Norinco guns was Marstar. Marstar. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, you could if the gun if there was an issues with it, you could just return it. T ninety seven. Um this one kind of kind of shocked me. I thought there would be more unreliability with these ones, but they're for the most part fine. You know, I gotta say, it might have be some it might have something to do with what that expectation you have with the fact that we've had two very well um publicized catastrophic failures on the sub with those two guns. Like I was mm -hmm. distinctly remember two people Basically saying, yeah, the gun blew up on me. Blew up. It blew me. Mm -hmm. Boom. Catastrophic failure. And that was coupled with the hilariously bad support from North Silva, who basically just told him to go. Yeah, it's Norinko. Yeah. Anyways, those guys didn't fill out the survey because I didn't have any major catastrophic with this. I had one guy talking about slam fires. That's it. Feature, not a bug. Uh, RDB, uh, yeah. So we mentioned a little bit about about the RDB, uh, that top rail warping. Uh, a lot of reports of unreliability on this one it kind of surprised me because I thought, as far as I knew, this gun was uh, was pretty reliable. Um, but it looks like again, varies depending on on uh, on the gun, right? You might the, get a really good one, you might not. And as you noted, the plastic butt plate can be mortared once. Once, yeah. <laughs> right there, there's the proof. Yeah, support on this. Uh, some people said it was okay. Uh, most people said it unused. Hey, uh, Vault said that they probably had this part. They just couldn't send it to me. Cause, yeah. you know, Sir Lord Baron Von Cheesenham yeah. is asking if the M14 still has a forged receiver. I think it still is forged. I think the only thing they changed was the bolt. Um, but I don't quote me on that. I, I, I don't know. Uh, SKS. Um, I, yeah wasn't really this actually had the most entries with sks in here <laughs> and i'm pretty sure i filled up my sk as one <laughs> there is one thing i'm wondering with this is again you mentioned like the cheaper it is and more people are likely to overlook or possibly forget about unreliability issues i mean generally the SKSs that my parents have have been reliable guns but i do remember distinctly one of them has had problems with feeding the last round and it will uh -huh. get up and then jammed like sticking straight up out of the gun and that's not an uncommon problem among canadian skss i've seen several people on several forums asking hey my sks is doing this what do i do about it and the picture is the bullet sticking straight up it's like this is the last round in the magazine and you know what that is with you know? some of them uh some of the skss have the pin put into the floor the floor not the floor plate the follower and uh, that pin can sometimes cause that thing to do some weird stuff. Uh, See, neither of my parents do. Theirs is the, the big, thick the fucking plate. thing, a metal uh, yeah. floor plate. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think I agree with you, Crazy. I think that uh, uh, people would be willing to overlook the odd jam with their SKS, where they wouldn't with 
an XCR or an ACR or something like that. Yeah, that would not be okay. Because one of them's two hundred dollars, the other one's two thousand, right? Yeah, exactly. Stack so tens. like, oh, I yeah, yeah, fantastic. I paid shit all for this gun, fucking yeah. Yeah. Stack uh, tens. Now the, the funny thing about so stack tens are available as complete guns. They're also available as build kits uh, or receivers, right? Some some of the different companies were doing build kits, and uh, there were some fit and finish issues. Well over half of these were build kits. So I, th I think if you got a gun made by Stag, like nine times out of ten, it's going to be fine. I think it's mostly with the build kits that, uh, that they were causing issues. That could also be people being kind of funny because I, mean, I, I think I remember the uh, uh, North Arms kit was supposed to be a blend kit. Yeah, so it, it was. Yeah, that could be that. That could be where the Fit and finish. Uh, the blemish wash is like, mm -hmm. you know, oh, this this particular wall pin hole is kind of a little bit off, or you know, this 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 uh this takedown pin is no the, the true north arm one. They were a blem kit because the forend was blem. The forend uh, rail was lower than the receiver. No, you're thinking of the matrix one. There oh, was you're a, right. Yes the, yes, the the one that I bought that was a stack ten blem kit. That yeah, was interesting. See, but at that point, then I feel like it's unfair for someone to go and say it's unreliable because you bought a Blem kit. You're expecting there to be something wrong with it. Yeah, but or people to say fit and finish, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, fit and finish. Like, well, you bought the one that was fit and finish. <laughs> it's, it's like <laughs> me complaining so about my AR being blemished when I bought the blemished fucking Colt Canada IUR and I bought a blemished SFRC receiver. And I like I didn't pay retail price for any of the components on that gun, and then complaining, oh yeah, my four end rattles and my my AR has got a bit of a fucked up like, or my lower's got a fucked up anodizing. Like I paid for that. <laughs> like you paid for those flaws. Yep. Moving on, Tavor X ninety five. Woo! Just running like mad. A couple people said Those that Jews they were mag sensitive. Guns. What's that? The Jews make good guns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and like a modern military firearm that is mostly unchanged, yeah, it's going to run fine. And not enough people had problems to even find out how support is on them. <laughs> nope, <laughs> nope. Uh, type Type eighty one again. Uh, like if if you would have asked me beforehand, hey, which of these are going to be surprisingly reliable? I wouldn't have said the Type eighty one because there was a lot of people who reported that they had that trunnion issue where the the guns were bent. Um. Uh, but, it must but did that a... really affect how the gun worked? No, is the not, thing. not at all. And I mean, you, you see here that I, I just one person reported that in this in this survey, and I got like a good number of responses. So, well, I do think that that was kind of a bit overblown with the first batch as well. I think that there was like one person said, "Hey, my gun's bent," and then everyone else not like kind of just jumped on the train and was like, "Maybe, maybe mine is too." I don't know, and just it. it blew up to be a lot using, larger like, than what it was using strings to try to detect like a, a half degree difference in uh yeah it's kind of hard to do some of that, isn't that, a, that that's a stamped gun isn't it yeah like but there's a... like a the thing that holds the barrel is the trunnion and that if you rivet it uh, a little bit off uh <laughs> it, it'll be bent and that, that's what that's what could cause it there yeah but that's kind of like what i'm saying it's like a, a fucking stamped gun it's got trunnions it's got rivets yeah yeah Chinese made. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, most most people replied that uh, that they're fine. I mean, how how precise can you expect a twelve year old to be? Yeah. Uh, VZ fifty eight or CZ eight five eights. Um, these one there was a, a couple in here. A couple of uh, weird ones. A couple of major catastrophic failures. Um, striker hammer failing on it. Uh, sheared lugs off of bolts. That was a little bit worrying. Uh, there was a guy asking in the sub not too long ago where to buy a new bolt because his shared a look. Hmm. That. Interesting. And then uh, uh, issues with ripping cases in half. I don't know if I really care about this uh, because that that sounds like an ammo issue to me. Like if you're running cheap surplus steel ammo and it's not good quality steel ammo, the action might rip the kit, rip it uh, off. Now, yeah, other, gee, uh, how could you ever have problems with like cheap Chinese ammo? I've, I've, <laughs> I've, I'm, I'm so shocked that anyone could possibly have problems with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think that's, I think that's what's really the the issue there. Uh, uh, uh WK180C. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Ooh. 
Now, I mean, some people are having no issues with these things. And I, what I'd be willing to bet is that those people aren't running thousands and thousands of rounds through theirs. Uh, because a lot of people had... Uh, we've talked about some of the, the some of the potential issues with this thing, right? They had a, they had a run of bolts that um, the heat treating wasn't good on them. And those bolts would shear lugs and uh, cause excessive wear and, and just not do well. Uh, the aluminum side on them, the gas key can, can eat at it. Uh, the gas block, if, if that bolt on it walks and that gas block gets loose, the piston can break because it will become un misaligned. Well, I just remembered, I could have changed my response on that one because my gas block was canted on. Well, they were all canted. Like a lot of the, the early ones were canted. Yeah, and they, and they were touching the uh, the four end. And aren't there two rails into the bolt for from the piston assembly? And haven't people been reporting that they snap inside the bolt on that? Uh, I thought I remember uh, seeing something like yeah, that. Yes, so those, those were some of the bolt issues they had with the. Uh, uh, they had a, a series of bolts and, and BCGs that weren't heat treated properly, and those ones were causing failure. So there's a lot of. Uh, there's, there's a, a recall of that. in the comments of one of those posts saying it's like these people are moronic they didn't heat treat them they just like painted them uh yeah i don't, I, 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 I doubt like, that yeah. i i doubt that they would no, have just that's kind of what it was like they were looking at it and going it's like that metal wasn't heat treated they just like anodized it or something like that which is supposed to change like the the the, the outside Hardness, oh, I I remember thing. that, and he said like they tried explaining that they actually specifically said they didn't heat treat it. I yeah, I remember exactly. that. Like in, in one of the in one of the uh, press releases on the bolt recalls was like, yeah, we we had a batch that wasn't heat treated because we changed the finish on it. It's like, but you didn't heat treat it, huh? Anyways, that's bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this this one has the highest rate of parts breakage or recalls and that kind of thing of any of these rifles. Uh, support, I've seen super speedy and helpful, um, but I think most recently here we've had people like one of the one of the comments that uh, that I saw was that someone mentioned um, the the first time it took two weeks, the second time it took four months. So yeah, I know the guy who did that one. <laughs> uh, as there's more guns in circulation, it's going to be with with this high of a rate of failure, more guns failing, having to go back, and now coupled with the fact that Wolverine is completely out of the picture and it's just on W, it's on um, Kodiak and BCL now, and we already know about BCL's notorious. Oh, it's it's uh, Kodiak and uh, well, North, North Silva. Silva. Yeah, North Silva. right. I thought they were pairing up with the, no I'm I'm wrong. Yeah, oh, but Kodiak North Silva uh, and uh, yeah, sorry, I'm I'm good. Yeah, no, no you're 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 right, it is North Silva, and still North Silva's not always known to be the most responsive people in the world either. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, yeah, pretty bad. I would say if you're gonna use it as a coyote gun, you're gonna use it like for twenty rounds a year, it's probably fine. Um but if you, it's not an AR replacement. XCR? pretty good a couple of uh, a couple of reliability issues um i haven't seen the reliability issues i have seen accuracy issues with the xcrs especially the xcrms uh not doing what they should be doing for that price and for that for that uh, uh quality but uh reliability I, uh, the ones i've seen have all been good <clears throat> and uh that's it back to you guys uh, speaking about reliability, we have a question, folks. DCL Coyotes, I'm pretty sure we talked about it last time, but somebody asked about it again. Should I put a pre-order on it? What about no. if I compare it with no. the WK or the DCL? Just no to all three at this yeah. point. No. Get a Type 97, it'll be a better gun. <laughs> Apparently. Type 97. That's a, a better gun. Up, though. I know. They're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Get an ATRS. Well, an right, ATRS. right now, we have fantastic choices on the 308 platform. Like the, the Stag 10 and the Matrix Aerospace, done. Don't need to look at anything else. 308, 65, Creedmoor, good to go. Now, uh, uh, they're price competitive. Their quality is, is good. Uh, you can build anything on top of them. And they take 
all the common uh, BCGs and parts and whatnot. Yeah, so what is it? DPMS that's it. pattern? Or... Yep. Yep. Air, Air 10 DPMS pattern, that's it. So Stag 10 and, and Matrix Aerospace are good to go for your 308. For your 223 platforms, uh, I think the ATRS, uh, like you, you mentioned there, Crazy, is uh, is the way to go. Their wait time right now is 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 the only issue. You have to you have to wait for one of them. If you don't mind, yeah, put a, put a pre-order for an ATRS. And well, I think I mean, the, the SLRs have got to be uh, uh, fine now as well, right? And you can but then you're going to pay with the, with the, you know, how they come together. Yeah. The thing with the Coyote is is like it's not available yet either. So you'd either be pre-ordering an ATRS, and there's some of those out there already, and we know that the only major problem is a couple of fit and finish issues, or you pre-order the BCL SLR Coyote, and we know that from pre previous BCLs, they've had a shit fucking job at their shit. So do you want to risk that when you look at ATRS, on the other hand, who've got a very good reputation behind them as a company? Yeah. Yeah, and you can put any trigger you want to in them. Yep. And they take down fast. Like yep. part part of the part of the allure with an AR is that you can get to the bolt really quickly. It's easy. I mean, like I don't know how big of an issue is that is. Like I don't know how how often you guys clean your guns, but like I, I use my stuff for competition, so I want it to to work. <laughs> I'm not willing to like just see like I wonder how many rounds I can let it go before it starts failing on me. I don't want to have that happen when I'm when I'm competing. So for me, the ability to like crack it open, pull the bolt out, and clean it really really quickly is very nice. And and I don't think I would be happy if my gun didn't do that. It wasn't able oh, to easy. Clean. So have you actually? compared the takedown and how things are in the modern sporter versus an ar because when i was putting together my buddies i found some things that were kind of interesting that i did not know about until i put it together uh well like there's only the one pin and then the, it comes right apart it doesn't like there's no hinge kinda, pin on the kind of you forgot one thing that freaked us out when we first put it together we thought it was a big issue with the gun uh which is the bolt carrier group Hangs out of the back of the upper receiver when you take it, when when you separate the guns. Yes. So if if you open up your AR right now, so you can see everybody. So it's going to do the same thing. It not as not as pronounced, but when I pull this thing out, uh, it doesn't hinge open immediately, and that's because the the BCG wants to push just a little bit, and it's and it's actually uh, when I hinge it down, it's actually pushing that the uh, back of the uh, uh, buffer, yes, right? But. If you, okay, just flip the gun around and do that again. Uh, show us the other side of the gun. Yeah. So you can see that without the forward assist in the way. Uh, With the ATRS, the... You have to pull it forward. The carrier, the, the bolt carrier, like, sticks out, like, maybe like a half a centimeter out of the back of the... Um, so, like, an actual noticeable yeah. amount versus yeah, the can, AR where it's more or less sticking out of the back of the upper receiver. And yeah, that so is you, have to pull, you have to pull it forward and off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it doesn't hinge down. You just pop the front pin, and it slides out the front because it's on rails. Yeah. Well, and there's also the fact that the, the rear lug is like a half-moon lug, so the only ways you could potentially do it is either to pull it forward and up or to try and like tilt it back and tilting it back is not going to work because you're going to hit the the thing there. You guys are thinking too much about this. You just yeah, no, like take the one pin that, out and you pull it off. Yeah, it's just something that when when my when my buddy and I put together the guy yeah. we were like, "Oh fuck, is this thing broke or something? Is like out of space or something like that?" No, nope, it's just the way it comes together. It comes together differently than an AR. Yeah. It, it's it's not an AR. It's not an AR. It's, <laughs> It's it, it's it's as close as we are to chimps, like a ninety nine percent kind of thing. But it's not the same thing. It isn't. Yeah. Yeah. It is the Neanderthal to the AR's Homo sapien. No, we're actually a lot closer to a Homo sapien, but it's like a chimp. Well, it's darn close, but it's not the same. Uh, enough with this analogies. Uh, so, Nova Scotia. Do you guys want to leave that to the to the next show? We're at nine o'clock right now. Eh, we, well, there isn't much we can talk about because there is. Get me and crazy not, going. Not, not We're gonna not put out the <laughs> conspiracy theory. The things to mention right now: dude wasn't licensed, guns he wasn't supposed to have, 
And according to the RCMP, most of them came from the U.S. Yes. And uh, the RCMP didn't send out an uh, Amber Alert. They tweeted oh. about it. Oh. And they shot up a fire hall. They shot up a fire hall. Yep. Well, that led to the RCMP overreacting and sending out emergency alerts in Nova Scotia and Nunavut <laughs> in response to just reports of there might have been shots uh, fired. Out yeah. goes an emergency alert like this. Yeah. Someone's got an airsoft gun in a Canadian tire parking lot. Out goes another emergency alert. There's someone maybe shooting around a dump they at a town. Them. They oh, yeah, they like, charged them with two, the fucking... Two guys were at Canadian tire and they're like, check out this airsoft gun. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, let's leave it in the car. Let's go inside. Let's get some CO2 for it. And it's like, ooh, he charged him with weapons him. dangerous. Are you fucking kidding me? That's that's a uh, uh oh whoops. We shouldn't have like even bothered with this, but we're embarrassed. Let's charge him with something because that's our jobs. Wait, who? What? Where? This so is... it at, like a couple days after the Nova Scotia shooting, there was reports of another shooting. And there was reports of two men with guns in a Canadian tire. The guys, the the one shooting didn't actually happen. There was no proof of a shooting. And the guys with guns in Canadian tires parking lot were two guys looking at an airsoft pistol. And then they went into Canadian tire to buy CO2 for it. And then one guy left the scene. And so the RCMP chased after the guy who left the scene when they realized it. And then they charged the guy who was still at the Canadian tire for it. And it's all because someone like saw a pistol outside a Canadian tire and freaked the fuck out and called the cops. And so they charged both of these guys with possession of a weapon dangerous to the public peace for a fucking airsoft pistol. Holy it won't shit. stick. There's a, it there's won't a stick lawyer out there. there salivating. No, you can't. <clears throat> like, the cops can levy bullshit charges on you. Like, that yeah. is not within your rights to not have bullshit charges levied against yeah, you. Like, th there's people who have gone to Canadian Tires to sell legitimate firearms in the parking lot. Like, I bought my... Yeah. <laughs> I, I bought my I Mosin like Nagant. Parking lots. I traded my Mosin Nagant for... Or my Arasaka for a Mosin Nagant because my Arasaka was a pile of shit. Like, this was not actually a bad trade. My Arasaka was a pile of shit, and I paid $200 for it. But I traded it for a Mosin in the parking lot of Sale in Burlington. And then another place I met up for a parking lot for a trade was for a pistol for a shotgun at, at like, a fucking en route. No, dude, it's Cabela's fucking... It's Cabela's parking lot for me because it's near where I live. Or, like, Donald's. <laughs> I did Canadian or Tire. Queen. I've done Canadian Tire. I I bought ammo in in a parking lot of a gas station in on the Danforth actually. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> it's, and it's this is all legal, and uh, yeah, the the cops are overreacting. So yeah, it's uh it's absolute garbage what that piece of shit did. Uh, really shitty to what those happened to the people and those families, and. Bill's already dancing on their graves. They, it, it wasn't even 24 hours. We didn't even have the facts of the situation. And the anti-gun lobby and the Liberal Party were both already using that tragedy to push their agendas. We had no idea what... We still don't even know what actual guns were used. And the anti-gun lobby, within 24 hours of the shooting, had a letter out demanding that Bill Blair immediately ban assault weapons. Because of that shooting. Yeah. Fucking disgraceful. That they, like, they the RCMP did not even know how many bodies there were, and the anti-gun lobby was already fucking dancing on their graves. It's yeah. disgusting. Um, folks, are you writing your letters, letting your MPs know that garbage? Other than that, how can we end this on a cheery note? Oh, I know. My Tika shoots okay with the crappy loads that I built for it, but I'm going to have to go ahead and try it again because I shot pretty poorly, so I didn't get very good results. So At least you still got a chance to actually shoot it. Oh, right. That's true. Alberta, we still have gun ranges open. We uh, do. Five of the trap ranges closed, and that sucks because I wanted to go trap on my buddies. So I guess we're just going to have to go into Crownland. <laughs> I can't go shoot my Crown. pistol on Crownland and all the loads I want to go. Like, I want to go shoot the 357 I loaded, and I, I can't do that on Crownland, and I can't go to the gun range. 
So and and Ontario's got no guidelines as to when the fuck they're going to open again. They'll open again soon. Yeah, I fucking hope in the so. US still... are reopening. New Brunswick is reopening. New Brunswick and Saskatchewan are reopening because they were deemed non-essential provinces. <laughs> <laughs> That's, so funny. Sent that That's a good way to end the show, <laughs> folks. I will be back in like two weeks, probably. I don't think we have much going on. Um, I don't know about you. I'm still essential. I'm still working. Be quiet. I have, I have to bitch about Service Canada to you guys after the show. Uh, see you in two weeks, everybody. Say goodbye, everybody. Go watch Snapfire Radio. They're doing. You guys are doing podcasts like fucking every two days. Just for any excuse, just yeah. all over the all over the place. <laughs> you had like an RZ one, RZ car one. It was a two hour RC one. <laughs> <laughs> Slamfire Radio. What's slam firing about these RC cars? I don't know, but it's gun related. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> awesome. Kill it, Adriel. See you in two weeks, everybody. <laughs>